Hello and welcome to MB Tech. Today we're going to be going over installing the first control plane or first uh, controller for our Kubernetes cluster. Um, we're going to be doing this from Ansible, but I'll also include what you need to do if you're actually uh, SSHing into the actual box itself, as well as the, as the uh, Ansible uh, code for, to do this as well. First thing that we want to do is make sure that our inventory is correct on there. So we'll do a quick uh, cat on our inventory. And as you can see, we got Docker on IP addresses 71 and 72, which are the two controls, and 74 and 75, which are, are, are two of the workers. And then we've got our first control plane at 71 and our other control plane at 72. You could have multiple. You could even add more if you wanted to. Uh, we also have the K8 masters, the children's, and then obviously the network load mouse, which we've already set up. Um, so we'll go through that setup first. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go uh, and do the actual install of Docker. Uh, for that. So first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to install Docker onto these systems. Um, so we will uh, run the command playbook uh, against that inventory and then configure Docker YAML. See it's gathering the facts. You can get to all four systems so that's a good sign. Uh, looks like it added the item of the IP forwarding that we need to do. Uh, it's installing the yum utils or checking to make sure that yum utils is installed. And now it's installed. It's adding the repository for the uh, Docker. And then it's making sure installing the uh, packages. And I was just going to start and enable and make sure that the Docker services are running on those systems. And there we go. Um, right now, if we go to those uh, systems, there's controller one, and we can do a Docker PS. You can see that Docker is actually running on the system. If we do a system control, If we do a system control status on Docker, we can see that it is up and running on there. Next, we're going to install the Kubelet or the Kubernetes uh, application on there. It's going to be against the same four systems. It's installing the dependencies, and then it's also installing the uh, Kube control as well, or Kube cuddle. Okay. So we look pretty good here. We've got uh, changed eight. Everything looks okay on those systems. So now we can actually go back to our main uh, control one and we can see what our status is. Next, we need to initiate the Kubernetes cluster. Um, here's the command that we're going to be using. It's the kube admin init. And then our version, which we checked earlier, the 1.23.4. Our pod network is going to be on the 192.168.1 uh, slash 16 for a CIDR. Um, our DNS domain is going to be apps. Uh, dot bing lab dot land and our control plane endpoint which is going to be our load balancer um, that we set up previous uh, that will allow it to go to both control planes and then uh, we're going to upload cert so once we put this in it's going to take a little bit uh, but it should run through it, it says here that it can take up to four minutes uh, hopefully it'll be faster than that but we'll see Okay, it has gone through. It has actually set up our uh, system, or our, our cluster, and from there we can actually see that now we've got the cube admin join command, and then we also have a cube admin join for our workers or our other nodes. Um, so we do want another control plane, and our other control plane is actually on our uh, second controller. Um, so if we go back to this image if we that we have here so we basically have the load balancer here we have our control plane one here that actually is set up and good to go so we actually have a kubernetes cluster started or if you want with just one node as the uh, control plane we're going to set up a second control plane on there and then we're going to add a worker or two just to, to show you how to do that I'm not going to set them all up because it's all basically the same uh, thing from the command. The biggest thing I can say from all of this is we're going to need to make sure we keep that information in a safe place uh, so that we can add those clusters later. 
Um, so if we go back to where we installed this, we can see that this is the information that we need. So I would take this, copy it, put it in a notepad or somewhere that you have it that you can run this and, and add those uh, systems to it. I know you probably can't read that. I'm going to destroy all this stuff so it really doesn't matter. But anyways, I cut and pasted that information that we need to set up our other control planes as well as our worker nodes to be added to those. Um, so now what we're going to do is actually go to our second control plane. Okay, in order to have uh, control of the control plane and see the different uh, systems that are on the actual cluster itself, we actually need to set up the uh, cube control uh, for that system on the local box itself. Um, so that's what we're doing here. Uh, we're basically just making a directory.cube and then we're using the uh, Kubernetes admin comp file and adding it there. So now we should be able to run the uh, cube control. Um, get nodes. And from there we can see that we've got our first uh, control plane master. It does say that it's not ready. Um, let's see what's going on with that here in a little bit, but it does show up at least that part of it. Next we're going to SSH into the second controller um, and we're going to run the command that was given to us from the first one to add to the control plane. And right now it's waiting to do the TLS bootstrap. And if we go back to our first controller, we can see that the second node has actually been added and that it is ready. Um, it's only been up two minutes and four seconds. So now we've got two control planes um, from our picture. Control plane one, control plane two, and next we're going to add a worker. Now the worker is a little bit different. It's not much different, but it's a little bit different. Um, that command that was given to us is here. If we want to um, add a member worker, that's this command here at the bottom. So that'll be a different one. So what we're going to do is we're going to SSH into the worker, and we just verify that we got Docker PS is on there. Yes. Okay. Now that we're on the worker two, uh, what we're going to do there is we're going to uh, do the worker join or node join. So we'll just copy that from our previous build there. And it's going to run the pre-flight checks just like the other one did. Let's do the same thing looking for the, this node has joined, has joined the cluster. So if we go back to our node 1 and run that same command, we can see that we have the uh, control 1, control 2, and worker 2 uh, added to this cluster. Um, it's going to take a little bit here. It looks like it's not quite ready yet. And now it's ready. So I was a little bit too fast on there. So it took 24 seconds about to get that up to the ready uh, state. Now you can add as many workers as you would like. You can have multiple control planes, but if you add multiple control planes, remember our load balancer, we only put the two that we have there as the controls. Um, so that's the one thing you got to be uh, careful with on that one. Other than that, that's the basics of setting up a Kubernetes cluster. Hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's been a little bit long. I'm going to try to cut it uh, as much up as possible out of there and uh, make it as fast as possible. There's another command that you can run to uh, get information on your different uh, nodes that you're running. As you can see, we've got the two control planes and the one worker. Uh, it shows what version we're running, what IP address it has. It actually tells us what OS image. We're running the Rocket Linux 8.5, the kernel version, as well as the container runtime on, on those systems. And you want these all to be the same anyways, but... Uh, just to give you a little heads up, that's one of the commands you can run. There's multiple other ones. I'll put that link in as well uh, on the uh, description. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. This was just basically installing the first uh, control plane and then taking that information and adding another control plane and then adding another worker. And then all your other workers are going to be the same. So I don't want to go through all that. Uh, it's a duplicate. Um, but you just take that script that was automatically created from that first one. You cut and paste it and put it into your other ones, and then you'll be up and running with a Kubernetes cluster. I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you for watching.